you know, I was really amazed that we have so many uh, important stories to tell. We want to get together and we want to have these um, these dialogues, whether they be uncomfortable. Um, we want to have these experiences for domestic and international students to get together and, and talk and integrate and, um, and learn about each other. Seeing its impact and now looking at it in retrospect, uh, one questions why we didn't have it earlier. And every time I get someone else coming up and saying, hey, this was a great event and I really connected with you, thank you for sharing. So that just makes it worth it. My name is Dr. Jessica Guzman Ray, and I am the director of the Intercultural Center. Uh, the Intercultural Center at the University of Rochester um, exists to promote um, cultural awareness and sensitivity, but also look at the intersections between one's identity and culture. And so we're looking um, to have programs um, and work with students and faculty um, in regards to um, talking about these issues that affect us all. Um, sometimes those conversations are difficult to have and having an intercultural center on campus um, to mitigate those issues, whether it's a, having a panel conversation, um, putting together a conference, or having some talks, I think um, these issues are really important for us. Flag was placed in um, a dorm, not in a dorm, sorry, in a frat building. At the time, the frat was not in that house, but just a regular person put it up in their window. And um, a, a campus member took a picture of it, um, put it up in the DLH page, I believe. Well, yes, so a member had sent the picture to um, the DLH page. Okay, and then from there, was. we sent it to, well, I'm not sure who specifically, sent it to the class of 2015 page. So each class is like their own page. And from there, it sparked conversation. And the person who actually put it up gave his reasons defending why he should put it up, you know, things like Southern Pride and that. Um, and for a while, the debate was quite intellectual. Um, and then it turned not intellectual. Last year, at a discussion at the uh, College Diversity Roundtable, following an unfortunate incident uh, involving a Confederate flag on campus, there was a intense and interesting discussion with students about the college's and university's response to that incident and what we might do to try to prevent further things like this from happening. And uh, one of the dominant ideas in that discussion was that we establish an orientation program. I didn't have in mind a specific thing that should happen. I've, I've always believed, I've been at the U of R for over 20 years, and I have great faith in the power of our students to actually take ownership of an, of an experience and event. And so I believed, and I still believe, that once we let students start talking and really own an event or an experience, that it's going to be really phenomenal. So I didn't have a specific goal in mind, except that students should be free to express themselves and other students should hear and hopefully have some kind of an impact on them. I work with a number of people, uh, Dean Feldman. Dean of students, Matt Burns, with Beth Olivares, with Norm Burnett from OMSA. Jessica Guzman Ray, um, Eleanor Oy, who's the Director of Orientation Programs. Staff in the Kern Center in the Office of Minority Student Affairs. Who did I work with? That could take up the entire 20 minute interview. Uh, you know, everybody who had their hands in on this. Um, there are an awful lot of people who made a success out of this idea. Some, some students. 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 The students, the initial founders of the students. Coming from students. A whole bunch of students who gave up an awful lot of time um, to, to work on this. Not only to work on this, but to share some pretty personal stories uh, in front of 1,300 freshmen, uh, which I think is pretty phenomenal. Towards the beginning of the summer, when we were really putting things in motion to really lay the plans, it became someone we needed to really contact the peer facilitators and kind of organize them together. Um, and that's where I took on that role in terms of creating the Blackboard group and sort of organizing the peer facilitators, but then also 
trying to work with Eleanor and orientation and other members of the committee in terms of organizing logistics of the One Community Program. I don't know about you guys, I just, I got an email mm -hmm. saying that somebody had, um, you know, pointed, pointed me over to, you know, the ICC, right. I think, or the Kern Center, wh whoever it was at the time that was organizing it. Mm -hmm. So I got an email saying like, oh, you know, we think that you could be a good candidate. How about you um, write up a little narrative and send it in and then we'll go over it and, s and see what we think. Right. I got an email as well and went to an info session, I think it was, um, and then submitted um, about a page. Yeah, I did the same thing. I found out later that my priest actually had recommended that I that I do the program, um, which was kind of neat. And then a little bit of info session. We I don't, I don't know if you guys knew, but I really didn't know what I was getting into. Yeah, I just knew I, I was no typing up a quick little life narrative and right. sending it in, and then right. we got selected apparently. Okay. So. During the program, um, there's a moment um, as a moderator where I step down and I just kind of grab a seat and I, um, our participant like every other freshman, and I, I was blown away um, by how emotional it got. Like I did not anticipate um, tearing up and crying. Um, I had heard these stories um, during the dress rehearsals and practicing with the panelists, but at the day of the event, I just I think I just. Um, overcame with emotion. It was like in this auditorium and there were like about like five, six people. Um, they all came from like diverse like backgrounds and like their whole like life, like no one was like particularly from like America. They, they all had like different stories that they wanted to share. And um, yeah, it was just interesting to listen to like how everyone's unique in their own way and d diverse, like not only by race, but like by their points of view. And it was just interesting to like hear all their stories. It wasn't until after hearing um, our other peer students' testimonies that I really got excited. And I was just like, this is going to be awesome. Like, we have so many different kinds of diversity on display here. And people have shared their stories and talked about how that's contributed to their education and to their experiences here at Rochester. Um, and by showing that there wasn't just one type of diversity or one way that you could be uh, diverse and be OK, um, it made me really, really excited to talk to the students and let them know that their stories matter um, and that they're important and part of the fabric here at New York. When everyone just kind of like settled in and realized that they all had a role, one being at that event and two being a part of the conversation, it was really, really good. Like I think one of the best things was that you had minority groups speaking at the discussion and you had the majority who was like, you know what? Yeah, for the majority, I don't have all these hardships as well, but guess what? Like, I can still get involved and still sympathize. I hope that this is just the beginning of the conversation. We will continue to have programming uh, throughout the year. Um, we've already been in talks um, with faculty, staff, and students about what type of programs that we should do as follow-ups. Um, because all the freshmen went through this experience, uh, upper class students were saying, well, my peers need to go through this. You know, we need to educate the upper class students about this. Um, and so we are slated to be in the next orientation. And so every year this will be a staple of our freshman experience, which is really exciting to think about. I'm hoping that um, we build off the momentum of this program. Um, that we have a whole series of dialogues throughout the school year that build on this one community concept, that um, we, we have these conversations in various spaces and places around campus, and it, it's a, an opportunity for people to learn more about each other. My biggest takeaway was, was sort of when, when we pull back the seams and create an environment where our students can come together, they have very beneficial conversations and they're all intelligent and they all come from different aspects of life but they're all really committed to being part of this community and working towards to make sure it's the best. It's always interesting because you see you know 1300 freshmen walking around campus and sometimes there's like this glint of recognition when they <laughs> notice who you are um, and the ones that have come up or have said something um, at least the connection that I've gotten out of it is that they really connected with at least one story, um, or at least one panelist, and that's been great. College is a place for people to grow, and it's in a new part of life to really express yourself really. And when everyone has this idea that everyone here is different, it gives them that opportunity to really be free. Well, I thought it was fabulous. Um, 
I was, I was delighted to see all the freshmen there from my sense of what, the, what they were like, what the audience was like. They were attentive and interested in, in what they were hearing. And I thought the students who told their stories that day were just wonderful. Uh, and so I think, not just my office, the Office of Dean of Students, but um, all offices on campus, groups of students, now have an obligation to make good on that promise that we made to the freshmen. And the promise is that we talk about difficult things and we talk about them with a with an amount of civility and respect that was um, that was modeled during one community. Eventually, we will live and breathe, um, you know, this one community. We already live and breathe Meliora. I think this is just the next tagline.